What's going on guys, Snickle here, and in this video I'll be walking you through how to get all of the online trophies for the base game and DLC for Red Dead Redemption on the PlayStation 3. This guide will be the most efficient way to get all of the online trophies, and in order to find players nowadays for certain modes, you must boost since the player base for this game is basically non-existent for any of the competitive game modes. Just want to clear that up before moving forward into this guide, so if you aren't interested in boosting for online trophies, then disregard any of the specific boosting methods that I discussed, but you can use the general principles to obtain your trophies legitimately if you are able to find other players. I do also want to note that the servers for this game can be a bit spotty at times, but just continue and try and persevere and eventually you will earn all of these online trophies. If you do go on to enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more trophy content like this. Also, let me know all of your experiences with this game down in the comments below. Red Dead Redemption has a total of 9 online trophies for the base game, 10 online trophies for the Outlaws to the End co-op DLC, 9 online trophies for the Legends and Killers DLC, 9 online trophies for the Liars and Cheats DLC, and 2 online trophies for the Undead Nightmares DLC, with a total of 39 online trophies throughout all of the base game and the DLCs. You will need 9 players for one trophy, you're going to need like 5 players for a few other trophies, but a majority of this game can be done by yourself in a private lobby. For each of those trophies, I will explain how many people you need and how you're going to get through them. In order to complete all of the online trophies in the base game, it will take you around 20 hours, but adding on the DLC, it can take another 20-ish hours or so, with the majority of this time going to leveling up and the co-op missions. This video will be a long one, so there will be chapters if you need to hop around to certain DLCs. With all of that being said, let's saddle up and head out into the wildest of West, cowboys. Starting off with this guide, I want to cover just the multiplayer for the base game in case people are here and just interested in that in order to get the platinum and finish up the game. The first trophy is Red Dead Rockstar, which is to kill a Rockstar or someone with this trophy in a public multiplayer match. This is pretty self-explanatory, but you either need to kill a Rockstar dev or someone that has this trophy, so you'll just need to organize to get this from somebody who's already earned it. Now, I want to discuss two trophies that are related to public competitive matches, starting with the trophy The Quick and Everyone Else, which is to be the top scoring player in any three consecutive FFA games in public matches. FFA stands for Free For All, and there are two public game modes, which are Gold Rush and Shootout. You will need only one other person for this. You can get into a match on your own and then invite your friends once you're in. Simply just beat them three times in a row in order to earn your trophy. You can use a method where your friend disconnects from PSN when the match starts to give the other person an automatic win if you want to make it faster. Next is the trophy Go Team, which is to be on the winning team for four consecutive victories in any team-based game in public matches. The team-based game modes are Gang Shootout, hold your own, and grab the bag. Simply just get one person in a match and invite your other players into the lobby. You will need a total of four players in order to start a match for these team-based game modes. You can do the disconnecting method previously discussed for the losing team in order to make this go faster if you do want to do that. Now let's get into the rest of the trophies that are more random and can be done in public lobbies, starting with the trophy How the West Was Won, which is to reach the top rank for multiplayer experience. Now this is something that I would advise to go for at the end of this entire journey, but I do want to give a little bit of a breakdown before moving into everything else. So you can earn XP from a lot of things, and any XP that you earn in the DLCs will also count towards your total level. If you want to grind out XP fast, you can continuously do the Hideout Solomon's Folly alone, and it'll take around 2 minutes once you learn it and get really efficient with it. There is a trick though if you own a physical version of the game, where you can delete the patch and connect to an offline LAN party on an unpatched version of the game. The benefit of this is that you can earn 3 times the amount of XP, which means you can earn around 2200 XP every 2 minutes instead of the patched 800 XP and you will need 337,110 total XP for level 50, so this will take around 5 hours of the triple XP in order to earn level 50 if you're just going to use that method. 
Again, I wouldn't worry about grinding this out until later in your journey, but I just wanted to present the options up front in case you do want to go for it or you're just, you need some something to do in your free time. Another note that I want to make about the level grinding for this game is that this game is notoriously known for having hackers that will come in and just spawn these dead bodies all around the map that will end up giving you infinite XP. They're really spotty, sometimes they're there and sometimes they're not, so it's just a luck of the draw if they are there. If you want to take a look, I'm not condoning this and saying you should do it, but if you want to take a look, I've seen them spawn at the McFarland Ranch train station all the time. All you have to simply do is just go up to one of them, just shoot him in the head and you'll continuously get XP for headshots. Again, I'm not condoning it, but if they are there, it may make your life a little bit easier. Next up is the trophy posse up, which is to create a posse and get the maximum amount of members. For this trophy, you will need a total of eight players counting yourself. Simply just press select and invite all the other players into your posse, and when they join, you will earn the trophy. You can do this with random people if you are able to find them online, doesn't really matter. The next trophy has a bit of a trick to it, but the trophy is slow on the draw, which is to get 10 assists in a single hideout in a public free room session. This must be done in a public session, and there is a trick if you're having issues with this. You can either shoot an enemy or someone in the leg and then let your partner kill them and you will get it legit, or you can start a hideout by getting inside of the border of it, and then your partner can spawn their horse. When their horse arrives, you shoot it in the butt a few times and then your partner kills it and you will get an assist on the horse kills. It can be a bit tricky, but once you get used to it, you can get it done super fast. The next trophy can be done by yourself and the trophy is hit the trail which is to get from blackwater to escalera before sundown in a public free room session again this must be done in a free room session for some time reference you must start in blackwater and leave any time after 6 a.m in game and you must arrive in escalera before 6 p.m in game the time can be seen in the upper right hand corner of the pause menu this can easily be done with a mediumly fast horse simply just set a waypoint to escalera before 6 a.m in game time so you have a clear path before leaving you will get there with plenty of time if you leave right at 6 a.m or shortly after it next up is the trophy most wanted which is to become a public enemy for 10 minutes and escape alive in a public free roam session Again, this must be done in a public free room session, and you can get this public enemy rating or whatever you want to say by killing AI. The game is a little spotty just because of the way the servers are where enemies or uh, AI won't spawn or they won't really pay attention to you. You can go to all different places all over the map like Chuparosa or Blackwater and get on top of a roof and just continue to kill enemies until you end up getting the public enemy rating, and then you just need to survive for 10 minutes and then escape. Sometimes your rating will just randomly disappear, so if it does, just keep killing until you get it and then stay alive for 10 minutes. A lot of the rooftops in Blackwater uh, are certain rooftops you can jump to, no one can get to you, so you just get the public enemy, hide, and then run away. Lastly, for the base game, we have the trophy Have Gun Will Travel, which is to complete all of the hideouts in a single public free room session. There are a total of eight hideouts that you'll need to complete in one public free room session in order to earn this. You don't need to complete any of the DLC hideouts that give you explosive rifle ammo to earn this trophy. So just take a little bit of time, but just go from hideout to hideout and you will get this. Now let's get into the first DLC, which is actually one of my favorites, which is the Outlaws to the End co-op DLC, which has a total of 10 online trophies. I do want to note that a majority of these trophies other than one can be done completely by yourself, but I would not advise doing that. You can have a maximum of up to four people in a group for each of these missions. I want to discuss each trophy in depth, but the general gist is that you need to beat all six of the co-op missions with a gold star regularly, and then gold star on the advanced missions as well. When you complete all of the regular missions, regardless of gold star or not, you will earn the trophies well done, which is to complete a singular co-op mission, and also the trophy have posse will travel, which is to complete all co-op missions. None of these missions are necessarily hard, but all you need to do is just get your group together and beat them all, and you'll have these trophies. If you do this with a group, you will need to split up for one mission to earn the trophy two guys, one co-op, which is to complete a co-op mission with just two people. If you play a little on the safer side and you're able to beat a mission without dying, you'll also earn the trophy Bulletproof, which is to complete a co-op mission without dying. 
again, none of these missions are too difficult, so as long as you watch your back, you should easily be able to complete this. And with beating a mission without dying, if your entire group can beat the mission without dying, you will earn the trophy Friends Indeed, which is to complete a co-op mission without anybody dying. I do want to note that for this trophy and the previous one, Bulletproof, that you can't get into that state of bleeding out, which will also count as dying as well. Continue to watch each other's backs while playing through, and you can earn this on any of the missions, if not all of them. Now, we're going to get into some of the challenges for the rest of this DLC, and the first one is tied to getting gold medals on all of the normal co-op missions. Earning a gold medal on one mission will earn you the trophy Stake a Claim, which is to gold medal any co-op mission. And when you gold medal all missions, you will earn the trophy Struck Gold, which is to gold medal all co-op missions. Gold medaling missions are not too difficult and require that you keep up your combo, get headshots, and score as much money as possible. The total amount of money needed for each mission is 8,860 on the escape, 8,045 on kidnapped girl, 6,040 on the herd, 8,750 on ammunition, 10,000 on the river, and 8,640 on Walton's gold. These totals are for the regular and for the advanced missions as well. If you need to know that or whatever, I will leave it down in the description below and it will also be on the screen so you can pause it if you need to. Continuing on the hard train, and now that you've completed everything with the regular missions, we can start on the advanced missions. These must be started from a different playlist within the game mode selection, and you must have completed all of the regular co-op missions in order to have the advanced missions unlocked. The first trophy is U Rule, which is to complete all advanced co-op missions. Simply complete all six missions. The only difference with the advanced missions is that expert targeting is enabled, which turns off aim lock, you take more damage, and you bleed out way faster. That's all. Next is the trophy Dodge This, which is to achieve a kill chain of 10 or more in any advanced co-op mission. Now, this may sound difficult since the expert targeting is enabled and it's basically free aim, but a workaround with this is using a scoped weapon since they are always in free aim. A good place to do this, if not the best place to get this, is at the beginning of the herd and you want to make sure that you pick the Marksman 2 class. I didn't discuss this earlier for getting a chain, but you must get kills in succession within the time shown within the green chip in the upper right hand corner. You want to obviously get this to 10 in order to earn this trophy. If you're able to get explosive kills, this will also count towards your kill chain. Lastly is the trophy The Mother Load, which is to gold medal all advanced co-op missions. These gold medals are determined by the same score as previously discussed, but the only additional challenge is that you have the expert targeting, lower health, and the faster bleed out times. This can be difficult, but with your knowledge of the missions now, with the regular playthroughs, you should be able to earn this within one to two tries of each of the missions. Let us now get into the Legends and Killers DLC, which added different competitive game modes and great new weapons. The first trophy I want to walk you through is the trophy Legendary, which is to reach level 50 and pass into Legend. This DLC added the ability to pass into Legend, which is basically prestige from Call of Duty. So if you were level 50, you could go into the character select screen and you are presented the option to pass into Legend. This will lower you back down to level 1, but you will have a different symbol. You just need to do this once in order to earn the trophy. The next two trophies require you to play with certain characters, so you just need to pick one and use them until you complete the tasks. One of the tasks is easier than the other since it will require Deadeye. The first trophy is Original Gunslinger, which is to get 25 Deadeye kills with Red. Red Harlow is the main character from Red Dead Revolver and can be swapped to immediately when you download the DLC. Now the hardest part of this is keeping your Deadeye up to get kills and also that NPC kills don't count towards this. In Free Room, there will be green boxes that refill Deadeye you can sit by them and continue to kill your boosting partner until you get 25. Next is the trophy Real Good, which is to get 25 dynamite kills with Pig Josh. Pig Josh is again unlocked right when you download the DLC. You can again do this in free room and you will start with two dynamites at spawn. You can replenish dynamite at white boxes around the map. Just kill your boosting partner 25 times with dynamite and you'll earn this trophy. 
Let's now get into the two trophies that you'll need a total of four people in order to get. First is the trophy Who Needs Deadeye, which is to kill three or more players in a standoff or showdown. You must start a public match of Free For All Shootout or Gold Rush. Once you have all four players in the match, start it up and at the beginning of the match you will be thrown into a standoff. You'll want all other players to run over to you and you want to kill all of them. The only caveat to this is you must kill them within 30 seconds because if you don't, the standoff will end. It's pretty simple. If you get these three kills as headshots and continue to play the match and get two more headshots, you will also earn the trophy Headhunter, which is to kill five players via headshot in a single shootout or gang shootout. You don't need four people total for this trophy. It can be done in a public shootout mode with just one other player. You just need to get five total headshots throughout the entirety of the match. The next trophy requiring four players is the trophy Double Bagger, which is to double capture three times in a single gold rush map. This mode only requires two players to start, but you will need four players total in order to get two bags to spawn at the same time. When they both spawn, you must pick them up and you must deliver them at the same time. Just do that a total of three times and you'll have your trophy. The rest of the trophies discussed in this section can be done with just you and one other player. To start the 1v1s, we will go for the trophy Call It A Comeback, which is to come back from a 2-0 deficit and win a Hold Your Own game. Hold Your Own is a game mode that's capped at 4 players but can be started with just 2. What you need to do for this is have your partner capture 2 points. Once that happens, you want to capture the next 3 which will earn you the trophy. Just make sure that when your partner is capturing the two points that you don't capture or do anything else. Next up is the trophy Stick and Move, which is to get three kills with knives or throwing knives in a single competitive match. As simple as the trophy states, you can either kill people with throwing knives or just the regular basic knife, and the game mode does not matter. You just need to be in a public lobby. If you don't spawn with throwing knives, you can again just use your simple melee knife in order to get this. The last trophy to discuss in this section is something that can be earned in the single player but is way easier to earn online since your enemies won't be moving. The trophy is Hail Mary which is to get a kill greater than 35 yards with a tomahawk. This is a trial and error process because when you kill someone it will give you a distance so you'll either need to move away or your partner will need to move away in order for the distance to read 36 after you get your kill. The next DLC that we have up is the Liars and Cheats DLC, which adds mini games like Liars Dice, Poker, Horse Racing, and many other things into the multiplayer. I do want to also note that everything for this DLC can be completed in private matches. To start off, let's discuss the trophy related to poker, and we can start with the quote unquote easier trophy, which is in a van down by the river, which is in a multiplayer poker game win a hand on the last card when you were losing prior. So if you know anything about poker, you know that the trophy is more or less very, very random. Essentially, you need to be losing until the very last card is put on the table, and then that card must make you win. What you need to do is get into a match with a friend, pay your blinds, and continue to check until both of you get the trophy, and it's 100% luck based, so you may have to do this for a long amount of time. The other trophy tied to poker is P -p 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 Poker Ace, which is in a full multiplayer poker game beat the table when the blinds are at maximum. Now this trophy is one of, if not the most annoying trophy in this DLC or any of the DLCs in the entire game, and it will require you to need to get six people total together in order to earn it. Now you can try to get this legit, but I doubt you will ever be able to find a full table and it will be really annoying and take forever for everyone to get their trophy. So I'm going to try to give you some steps to follow to get this done the easiest way. You want to get six people into a poker lobby and into the table. Once the match starts up, everyone can fold to get that first hand out of the way. Once that hand is done, four of the six people can leave to another lobby or they can go all in and fold and then they can bust out. This will only leave two players left in the match for the next hand. From this point on, you should now have maximum small and large blinds, which are the initial fees that you have to pay to play your hand. You want the person who is not getting the trophy to put all of their chips in 
but one. And the other person getting the trophy to call and then have the person not getting the trophy to fold, giving all of the chips to the person getting the trophy. This will allow some flexibility just in case the person who's getting the trophy does not get a good hand in order to win. You're basically giving all of the chips to one player other than one for the other player. From this point, the person getting the trophy will just have to wait until they have a winning hand and force the person not getting the trophy to go all in and lose the rest of their chips. Once the person wins, they will get their trophy. Then you just need to rinse and repeat this for everybody else. I do want to note that it will help if you're playing with someone who knows how poker works and what hands will be other hands. It will make it a lot easier. Essentially, long story short, you want to get six people in a lobby. You want to get four of them to quit out so that you just have two left, which will then leave the small and large blinds. From there, you want to give all of the chips except one to the winning player. And then from there, you're just going to keep playing until the winning player gets a hand that's going to actually win. Then the other person in the lobby that's losing or not getting the trophy will go all in. The person winning will match and then you'll end up getting your trophy. It sounds like a lot, but honestly, it's really, really easy. Now let's get into the trophies related to Liar's Dice, which are very simple compared to what was just discussed for both of those poker trophies and will require just two people total. The first trophy being Good Call, which is in a single multiplayer Liar's Dice game, successfully make a spot on call. This can be done with just one other person. Make your partner make a call on the right number of dice on a specific number, and when you get it to your turn, just call it spot on. Next up is the trophy One Die to Rule Them All, which is to, in a multiplayer Liar's Dice game, win with only one die left. Again, this is very simple with just one other person. You need to make ridiculous calls like 10 sixes, and then your partner needs to call a bluff, and continue to do that until you have one dice left. Then reverse the roll and have your partner call ridiculous calls and you call their bluff until they're completely out of dice and you win. Now we do have two trophies that are tied to the Grand Prix horse racing that will require just two people in order to start. The first trophy that we have here, and sorry I'm going to butcher this, but from glue to Mandu, which is to get last place in a race and then first place in the next race in a Grand Prix in the races playlist. For this, you must start up a Grand Prix with a friend and then come in last place for the first race. Once you do that, for the second race, all you need to do is win, then the trophy's yours. Next is the trophy Triple Crown, which is to get first place in all races in a Grand Prix in the races playlist. Each Grand Prix can range from anywhere between three to five races, with the shortest being the Wrath Skeller Grand Prix. Regardless of the Grand Prix that you pick, all you need to do is win all of the races in order to earn the trophy. Next up, we have the last game mode added, which is Stronghold. This mode has a team that attacks and a team that defends highlighted areas. The first trophy for this mode is we must protect this house, which is to, while on defense, do not allow the attacking team to capture any of their objectives. This is as simple as it sounds, with the hardest part just being getting on to the defending team first. This trophy can be earned with just two people, and all you want to do is start a private match of Stronghold. Once the match starts, just sit there and do nothing, making sure that no one is getting kicked for inactivity. Once the match is over, the defending team will earn their trophy, then switch sides to get it for the other player. Each Stronghold match will take around three and a half to five minutes in order to get through. Next up is the trophy Legion of Boom, which is to get a triple kill while on the attacking team in Stronghold. For this trophy, you will need a minimum of four players since you will need to have three players on the defending team and one player on the attacking team. You can trick the game by going in as a posse and then having one person who's getting the trophy leave the posse, which will make it a 3v1. When you're on the attacking team, just have some dynamite or an explosive rifle and head to the attack point. Make sure that all players from the opposite team are together and kill them with one explosion. If you're lucky enough to get Fort Mercer as a map, there's also cannons that you can use as well, which will make this a lot easier. Lastly for this DLC is the trophy, put the posse on a pedestal, which is to attain over 50,000 posse points in a single free room session. This can be done easier with more people since you can be farming different hideouts at the same time, but you all must be in one posse, and if someone leaves, they will leave with their points. This isn't really difficult, it'll just take a little bit of time. And also, if you are worried about hackers, just remember that this can be done in a private free room session, so you can do this completely uninterrupted by anybody else. Now I know the only compass that I 
The Undead Nightmare DLC has the least amount of online trophies, but it does have the most amount of single player content and is one of the best, if not the best single DLC for any game to ever release. But we're not here for all of that, we're here for the multiplayer trophies, so let's dive right into that. I do want to note that this DLC will require the most amount of unique players for the last trophy that we will discuss, but let's start off with something that's easy, which is the trophy Smoke That Skin Wagon, which is to make it to Wave 15 in Undead Overrun game type in multiplayer. This is as simple as it states and can be completed on any map with any sort of settings. I personally found that the Ravenger or Mauler class to be the best to play as, but pick what you feel comfortable with. I also personally enjoyed the Dead Man walking map since it allowed you to get onto rooftops and easily take out all of the undead, but again this is purely subjective and play on the map that you feel comfortable with. You can do this with up to 4 players total and I would advise to play on all the maps just to experience the game mode and the locations. I would give a rundown on what the mode consists of and everything that you can do, but long story short is that it's a horde based mode and that you don't want to die. Every once in a while you will get a coffin that will spawn that will give a better specialty gun, but you want to be comfortable with what you start with. There are different rounds of ammo that you can use if you do get into a pinch to help you clear out the undead a little easier. Lastly is by far the most annoying trophy to coordinate throughout this entire game, but it is the easiest to complete, which is Kingpin. This trophy requires you to fight off 8 unique players during your time on top during land grab in multiplayer free room. Now you can get this legit if you're able to find a lobby with 8 players that do care about land grabs, but I doubt you'll ever be able to find that. The easy method around this is that if you're able to get a group of 9 people counting yourself together, is to have everyone stand around the wagon wheel post at the land grab. The person who's getting the trophy should then activate the land grab and then throw a stick of dynamite in the circle of eight people, killing them all. Then the next person should come up and claim the land and wait for all eight people to bunch up in a circle again and throw the dynamite and kill them all and rinse and repeat this until all nine players have earned their trophy. After following everything previously discussed, you should complete everything needed for all of the Red Dead Redemption multiplayer for the base game and all of the DLCs. These servers have been going through the ringer within the past few years with them initially being on GameSpy and then being revived, to then being riddled with hackers and then being fixed and who knows what the status is today. I would say that if you are in the market to complete the game at any point in your life that you should hop on this sooner rather than later. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and if you did find it enjoyable or informative, be sure to leave a like down below. I will leave links to all sorts of useful guides and sites in the description below as well for your convenience. If you would like to see this type of video for any other game, be sure to leave a comment below. I will only make these types of videos on games that I personally complete so I can give my personal insight on how to make it more efficient for you. Let me know your thoughts on the game down in the comments below, or if you do have any questions, be sure to leave them below as well. Again, please give the video a like if you did enjoy it or it was informative, and if you've made it this far, consider subscribing for more trophy content like this. Anyway, I hope to see you guys around sometime soon.